Hi, welcome to the sixth video tutorial of the Ozel programming nodes add-on. In this video I will be talking about the trace node. With the trace node you can trace rays in your scene and detect collisions with geometry, which in cycles isn't possible at all. In this video we will be creating our own ambient occlusion shader, um, which will have more functionality than cycles default shader. The first thing we will do of course is add the trace node. Um, as you can see, it has got uh, four inputs and five outputs. Uh, the inputs define the origin and the direction of the ray that you're tracing. Uh, most of the time, you'll use the position of the geometry that is being shaded. Um, in this example, we'll do the same because we're trying to calculate the occlusion of the points that are being shaded. To calculate this occlusion, we need to... Uh, trace rays in a hemisphere around the shading point. Um, for that we will need random rays. Now in the previous video we created a random, uh, random vector generating function. So we will be using that. Um, I have already included it in my blend file. Um, this function generates a completely random vector, but we only want it to be in the hemisphere around the shading point, and half of the uh, vectors generated by this function will be in the wrong direction. So we'll combine it with the normal of the point that is being shaded, by simply adding them together. Now there is one case where this will go wrong, and that is when this vector goes in the completely opposite direction of the normal, because then you'll have a, well, a zero length vector, which will probably uh, give an error. So what we'll do with this random vector is multiply it by a value really close to one. Uh, next, we need to normalize this vector for the trace node again. So I'll just add in a normalized vector now. So now we've got the origin and direction of our uh, tracing vector, and we just need to connect them to our trace node. I'll just organize these a little bit. Now this is the direction and the position will be used as the origin of the trace, uh, trace vector. So, um, next we need to set the distance um, which will control um, when collisions are detected. For example, when I set the maximum distance to 10, um, any geometry further away than 10 Blender units will get completely ignored. And you can also change the minimum distance so that all geometry closer than this value will get ignored. Uh, for this shader, we will leave the minimum distance at zero uh, and the maximum distance we'll add as a parameter. Uh, this way we can control the ambient occlusion per material and per object as opposed to a cycles shader node which doesn't offer this control. I'll just rename these to distance. Um, next we want to know when we actually hit something uh, which is returned by the hit output. As you can see this is an integer and whenever you hit something, when the ray that was traced hit another object, or sometimes even the same object, it will return true. So you can use this, for example, as the input of an if uh, function, so that you can execute code or nodes when you found a collision. Now, whenever we hit something, we want the material to become darker, whereas when you don't hit something, the material should become more white. Um, to do so, we'll add, first add in a select node and connect the hit parameter to it. And then whenever we do hit something, we want it to be a black color, so a float value of 0. Uh, and otherwise we want it to be a white color, so a value of 1. Um, and now if we compile the shader, And view the result of this. We first need to set the distance, of course. 
you can already see a very basic ambient occlusion like effect. Now we are going to refine the shader since we've got more information just, just whether we hit something. We also have the point that we found, the normal and true normal of that point, but also the distance from the origin to the found point. And this distance we are going to use as the weight of the ambient occlusion effect. So instead of just black or white, we're going to scale uh, this value based on that distance. So whenever we hit something at the distance of zero, it should be completely black. And then the distance uh, will be zero, of course. But whenever we hit something at the maximum distance, we want it to be scaled towards one. So what we do is just divide the found distance by the maximum distance. And then we'll get a value between zero and one. Now, I'm not going to remove this select node. Um, you might think that's possible, since if you don't hit anything, the distance will be set to the max distance, but that is not the case. Uh, if you don't hit anything, all of these four values don't, will get a completely random value. They, they won't make any sense. So we still need to select node for whenever we don't hit anything. So right now we've just got a float value, but we, we want to use this with a shader, of course. So uh, to do so, I'll just add in a diffuse shader and then use this as the input color. And now whenever the uh, point that is being shaded is occluded, the color of the shader will be a little bit darker. So if you look at this effect, you can see that it is, it is a uh, default diffuse shader. But especially here at the bottom, it's a lot darker than it would usually be. Um, if I set the distance to zero, we just get the flat a diffuse shader and with by changing the distance we can you know add some shadow to it um, we're going to make this shader even better because we're going to remove the diffuse shader instead we're going to add a shader input so what we're going to do is we're going to use the multiply shader and multiply the shader input with the occlusion amount so now we've got a node, or a shader node, with a shader input, and whatever we uh, kind of shader we connect to it will uh, get the ambient occlusion effect. In cycles, this isn't possible at all because you don't have the multiply shader. You can only um, add uh, the ambient occlusion shader to your other shaders. So now if we got our own custom ambient occlusion shader. Um, keep in mind that the trace node is quite slow. If we compare the com uh, performance of the ambient occlusion shader with this trace node, you will see that it is a lot slower. Um, this is because these trace uh, operations um, are not done in the same way as the shaders do them. Um, so there's a performance loss. But you can of course create very complex effects with this, uh, things you can't even uh, create with cycles. The trace node really is one of the best things about uh, using OSL.